What's going on everybody? It's Chris from Profoto and today we're going to be doing one light portraits with soft modifiers. So last week we did the same thing, some one light portraits showing you that you could make cool photos with a single hard modifier and for the most part we only used an A10 so we didn't really pair it with any type of magnum reflector or anything. I, the, the most we might have used was a little 20 degree grid which is cool. We're going to continue on that path today but we're going to be using softer modifiers or modifiers that make the light softer. So we have, uh, we're gonna be using an umbrella today, we're gonna be using a strip box today in a, in a really cool way. Something that I, I've been playing with for a couple of years that I think is kind of fun. Um, a fun way of using a strip box that I don't think, I've never seen anyone using it like this, so I think it's kind of cool and it's gonna be fun to share it with you. So, like I said, we're for the most part, we're just gonna be exploring what you can do with one light with a modifier on. Obviously we're going to be using a modifier today to get the light source to be large as opposed to last week when we were just really using the head of the A10 to keep the light source small. So we were getting harder shadows, more of a hard light. In order to get a softer light we're going to be using larger modifiers because the rule is if you're new to lighting and this is something that you're unfamiliar with, the size of your modifier in relationship to your subject is going to determine whether that is a hard light or, or a harder light or a softer light. So if you have a really, really, really big modifier and you have it really close to your subject, it's going to be softer. If you have a really small modifier or no modifier and you can back that away from your subject, that's going to be a harder light source. Uh, but the, the main part of that is the relationship to the subject. So if you think about the sun, for example, it's billions and billions of miles or kilometers around it's huge but in relationship to us here on earth it's very very far away therefore when you go out at noon or you know one or 13 however you do your time um you you can find that you get harder shadows much more defined shadows in direct sunlight and that once again that's because in relationship to us the sun is really far away in relationship to us it is small so it's a harder light source so like i said because of that Whereas we, with the A10 that we were using no modifiers, we have modifiers today. So just so you can kind of see what we have going on, we have the RFI 1x4 strip box. And we're going to use this for our second shot today. Uh, you know what? We might actually do this for the first shot today now that I'm thinking about it. Because um, I think we're going to do three photos. We've, we've, I've prepped all this stuff for, for us doing two different photos. Hey, Kate, Kate saying hey, everybody. Um, we've prepped this for doing two photos, but we're probably just going to throw in a third one just for fun to kind of make things. So the two of the photos that we have today are relatively dramatic. Um, and then I kind of want to have a poppier photo, kind of like what we did with the yellow shot from last week. So uh, let's do that. So let's start with the really cool way that I like to use strip boxes for portrait stuff. So a lot of people are used to strip boxes being really, really good for uh, rim lights and stuff like that. Um, you'll see, you can see people use strip boxes uh, just in really, really cool ways. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to hang it overhead. So it's going to be sitting, if you, if it's going to be facing you, so it might be harder to see it doing this, but it'll actually be sitting like this over the top of Kate's head. So the goal of setting it straight, so it, let me just put it on the light stand so you can see it. But the goal is to keep the light narrow on the sides of the face, but still be really soft because the cool thing about a strip box is the light coming out this way is soft because it's four foot, especially when it's in relationship to the subject. But the light coming out this way is going to be a little bit harder because it's only a foot across. So um, it should give some nice definition to the face, which I know it does because I've used, I've used this a bunch before. It should help give some definition to the face, but also still maintain some softness. And because it's gonna go over the top of the subject's head, in this case, Kate, uh, you're going to get a little bit of hair light over the top, which is kind of dope. So we're going to use a Profoto D2, which I have right here, and we're gonna boom it out vertically like this or horizontally. This isn't vertically, this is horizontally. So, horizon, horizon. <laughs> whatever. Don't science me. <laughs> um, cool, so let's just get this a little flatter right there. Perfect. 
hang the softbox. A little pro tip for putting a softbox on, if you'll open up the side flap and put your hand underneath it, it's way easier to mount these things. Also, even better pro tip, if you flip it upside down and use gravity, it's even easier than that, so. But I've already, I've already inverted the D2. So, I'm also gonna back it away from the background some, so that I can get the background to go darker. So it's boom. This jammer, let's turn this wheel this way so we don't lose a light and or a Kate. That would be terrible. Must fly. Yeah, you know, I'm here for you. Cool. So we have the one by four, like I said, boomed up this way. I'm gonna turn it this way a little bit. The point of it is, can they necessarily see what's happening? Cool, yeah. for the most part. Gotcha, you're on the wide shot, you can see it. So for the most part, Kate's gonna be standing underneath it, just like this. So the top of her head will get illuminated, it'll be like a little bit of a hair light, which is kind of cool. And then all of this light right here, moving towards you will be really, really soft. So it'll keep the shadows nice and soft. But this light right here will have more of an edge to it, which is kind of cool. So kind of getting, for me, kind of getting like two lights out of using one modifier, which is kind of fun. Um, so sweet, so let's do that. I'm actually gonna change my camera lens out because I just realized I'm at, I wanna use my 50 millimeter for this. Let's kill that. Uh, we probably have 12 foot ceiling in here maybe. I th it seems like 12 foot, right? No, maybe it's like 10 feet. So I'm like, I'm almost six feet tall, I'm like 5'9", five, 5'10". Yeah, let's say, let's say, let's say 12 for funsies. But you could easily do this by sitting down. So if your ceilings aren't that high, you can just have your subject sit down and you can do the same thing. So cool, I'm gonna put my 23 right there because I'm gonna need that in a minute. So awesome, camera settings wise, F8, uh, just because I'm gonna try to knock out as much of the ambient light as I can. Hi, glaciers. Oh, glaciers up in here? Is it a... Uh, why am I, Devin. yeah, why am I, I was gonna say, why am I blanking on Devin's name? Um, what's up, Keisho, I see you, dude. What's up, Jess, I see ya. Um, so cool, so ISO 1000, I don't remember being ISO 1000, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna adjust that back. I think I might've bumped my camera. So I'm gonna go to ISO 160 for this. Lock that into place, 250 of a second, F8. Let's see what we're looking like right here. And so I'm going to also, oh, you know what? I don't actually think I turned the head on. So let's do that right now. Yeah, it's fine. We have, we have remotes for this stuff. Fancy. <laughs> cool, I'm just gonna get the modeling lamp turned on. Sweet. So like I said, Kate's gonna be up underneath the, the modifier a little bit. So come forward just a touch. So maybe like, like halfway in. Yeah, maybe right there's probably fine. And so what I'm gonna do, let me see if I tilt this up a little bit more so you can see this. And then we're gonna bring the light down a little bit more. You wanna do the little swoopy hair thingy and get ready. Oh, you wanna do this? Oh yeah, I forgot we did do that. Cool. Yeah, it's, just, it's a patented swoopy hair yeah, move. You're welcome. A swoop? Yeah, the swoop. Swoop it to one side. Cool. And swoop it back. So, 250 of a second, F8, ISO 160. So, I'm going to take Caitlin's ever favorite uh, test shot to get the TTL correct. So, I'm going to go forehead on this one. Perfect. That's actually kind of funny. You're welcome, everybody. Oh, <laughs> I got to bring my computer screen up. Oh, so cool. I should probably give it yeah. so they can see. Yeah. So, Details. Hold on. in case you're just wondering if, if anyone's new to this, what I did is I took a TTL shot of Kate and then I flipped it over to manual mode and locked in that exposure just because some things have changed since we played with any of that stuff before. So I want to make sure my exposure is right on the money. There's my forehead. There's a forehead. You're all welcome. Oh, wait. Hold on. We're trading it. <clears throat> She's going to flip them. I'm just wasting lots of time. <laughs> but this is kind of cool. It's it's a fun little one light setup. Um, there we go. I, I was, uh, a friend of mine and, and I were playing around with uh, lighting at a, uh, I was helping Peter Hurley with a headshot, um, one of his headshot intensives a long time ago. And a friend of mine and I were playing around with some 
ideas for lighting. So, and this is what came out of here it. Here we are. So here we are. So let's get focus. We're good there. Cool. So bring your shoulder this way a little bit. There we go. There we go. Three, two, one. So actually gorgeous light. So it's, it's really, really cool light. Actually, let's take one more, but pop, go to the, uh, yeah, go back there and just kind of kick that elbow back and then bring that shoulder towards me a little more. There we go. Three, two, one. Beautiful. So what's cool about the light is once again, it's got an edge to it right here. So you're getting some definition here in the cheekbones, but if you look at the, the shadow underneath the nose, it's incredibly soft. And that's what you're gonna get from the light being, so Kate, you must have read it really fast. That's what you're gonna get from the light source right here being so long and so far out, you're getting a ton of coverage. So it's really doing a great job of filling in any shadows that you might get up underneath the nose, under the chin. It's a really, really nice light. But like I said, at the same time, keeping some definition. And this is one of the reasons also that I'm having Kate kind of turn this way a little bit more. No, this shoulder this way. So Kate going this way a little bit more because I want, I still want some light to hit the shoulder. I still want to be able to see that. I don't want it to go totally dark straight down. So the pose kind of mimics what the modifier is doing a little bit, but the modifier is still only giving me that light on the edge was really, really great. Let's take one more. There we go. Three, two, uno. Beautiful. Very, very cool stuff. So something that you can simply do with a strip box. You do it with a one by three would be fine. Uh, the one by four is just, uh, I don't have a one by three in the RFI line and I knew I was using the D2 today. So that's why we have the RFI one by four. But like I said, you can easily do it with the one by three. Watch out for that right there, kid. I don't wanna, I don't wanna run you over, cool. You can easily do it with the one by three. And I think it's really, really nice. So beautiful image with just one light in a strip box. Let's see if you guys have any questions. Can, can you get I, yourself back in the frame? Yeah, yeah, I just gotta get my computer over here. I'm gonna get my computer, or at least read, a, read the question. Someone said, can I use my two by three softbox to create this effect, thanks, uh, from Chris in South Africa. So you could probably do something relatively similar to it. The only thing that you're gonna lose is the, the dis, the, the, the width that's here, you're obviously gonna double that. So it's gonna be a little bit softer on the edges going this way, but you can absolutely do it. One of the cool things that you can add to your two by three, if you've never seen this thing before, is we make something called a strip mask. So you can actually put a mask over the front of your soft boxes and it'll, it kind of blacks out the edges. So you could turn your two by three into a one by three if you wanted to. So if you're, if you're going for that specifically, you can put a strip mask over the front of it and one, one you're not having to buy a new soft box, which is kind of dope. You're just putting a new, uh, a new modifier over the front of it and you have the best of both worlds. You can have a strip box or you can still have your two by three, which is kind of dope. I've never tried it with a larger soft box, um, it'd be worth trying, but the idea behind it is just keeping the light going this way relatively narrow. Let's see. Um, what's up everybody? Nico, what's happening? Um, sweet. Hey everybody. Let's see. I'm, I think that was my only question right there. So cool. What we're gonna do now is more of a full body shot. Uh, one light, gonna be uh, more of a side light, so we're gonna try to make a big light kind of wafting in one direction. But it should be really, really pretty, pulled back, and, and we, we're gonna get more of that light onto the background, so you'll be able to actually see the, the canvas background and everything like that too. So let's get that set up right on. So we're gonna still stay using the Profoto D2, but we're gonna switch over to an umbrella with a diffusion panel. Uh, we're gonna go diffusion panel just because it's gonna kick the light around. <laughs> I'm like smacking my head into stuff. We're gonna, we're gonna use the umbrella because it's gonna kick the light uh, around the room a little bit more. Even though this is a one light portrait, my walls are white. So I'm gonna try to utilize that in keeping the contrast relatively low. The contrast is cool, it's just not my favorite thing in the world. Like I don't like to go overboard with it. 
So for this shot for me, I'm gonna try to let some of the white walls fill in some of the shadows. So that the fusion panel is gonna help with that because it's gonna be able to throw the light in more places, whereas we are just using the umbrella. Uh, it's gonna have more of a defined edge. So if you're wondering why we're going to fusion panel on this, let's take this one by four off. Sweet, ooh, that thing's bright. Oh yeah. Cool, I'm actually gonna kill that for right now. I think it's really bright. Cool, so let's get that set up. Sorry, I'm just turning the modeling lamp off. The thing is, question. what's the question? Oh, let's see. What if you have a big light? Like fill below. Have you tried that? Um, you can totally like if you wanted to if you wanted to kick some light back in and just bring the contrast down, you can totally do that. Um, I probably could have grabbed a reflector and done the same thing. The only reason the only reason I didn't do it is because I'm just trying to make I'm trying to keep it as bare bones as I can when I'm saying like a one light portrait. So if I'm talking about just one strip box, like let's figure out how we can utilize that one strip box to make a cool shot. That makes it like clamshell, right? When you have- Yeah, like it's, 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 a clam, it's a clamshell style light. The, um, the reason that you saw, I don't know if you saw the way that I had the strip box tilted, but I'll show you. Caitlin, stand. Oh, here we'll do we'll, we'll do it with this we'll do it with this light. Wait, 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 wait. Stand this way, so I'm going to show them what it looked like. So, yeah. So the strip box was like this over her head, right? Mm -hmm. So the point of that was once again to kick some light onto the hair to give it more of a hair light, but keeping this low enough that it's going to start to fill back in this way. It's going to take longer for this light to get there as opposed to this light. So this is going to start acting like a subtle fill. Um, and you could. Honestly, you could vary that by lifting the light. If you lifted the light up a little bit higher, at that point, this light is gonna start getting to her at a longer pace of time as this. So you're probably gonna start bringing the contrast up. This is kind of where the science behind lighting gets really, really cool. Uh, this is the inverse square law. It's just in different parts of the flash. So by having it a little bit closer to her, we're still kicking that light forward, but it's gonna be a touch more contrasty. I could raise it up. I would lose some of the softness, but it's gonna start making the light a little more even. I feel like maybe I should actually photograph this. Uh, Good. <laughs> let's just- We're here. Let's we're here. It. Let's just photograph it real fast. I've got my umbrella set there. We'll just, we'll kind of leave it here. Let me get my one by four again. Cool. So let's see if we can get the same thing just by lifting the light up a little bit. My guess is knowing what the inverse square law does, the answer is yes. So and I'll probably have to tilt it just a touch more just to kind of keep that light. I'm gonna totally burn my hand. Um, just to keep that light kicking into her eyes, but it'll be awesome. So let's go tilt down. Cool. Let's pitch it back this way a touch. So like I said, it's kicked back a little bit. That way it's throwing light into her eyes. I'm gonna have to kick it back a little bit more because we're gonna raise it up higher, but it should be nice. So let's go, let's go upsy daisies. Okay, you ready to rock? I am ready. Let's do it. We're here, we're shooting, we might as well try it. So this, in theory, once again, should make it a little less contrasty. Let me grab my handy dandy camera. And swoop. Swoop here. And swoop. The light has changed as, as far as um, positioning goes a little bit, so I'm gonna re-meter. So take a tiny step backwards, right there, I think. So, perfect. TTL shot's done, so here we go. So kick that elbow over here. I actually wanna turn my modeling lamp back on. Here we go. So kick that shoulder back over here a little bit. Uh, him back, yeah, here we go. Here we go. Three, two, one. So yeah, so the contrast dropped down. It's still a dramatic shot because the way that the light is um, being chopped off as far as like here goes, but let's show them side by side. So you see the contrast starts to even out a little bit more. Really cool stuff. 
but once again, your, the hair light's not gonna be quite as strong just due to the fact that we raised it up a little bit more. This is, this is the fun stuff. You can play with this and get the, the look you like. Me personally, I really like the first shot. I like kind of this angling right here of the light in. I like the highlight on the hair, something I dig. But you can play with that distance and, and get cool stuff. Umbrella test? Umbrella test, we're about to do the umbrella. We're about to do the umbrellas now. We, uh, we started talking about something when it came uh, to using a second light underneath. And I just wanted to explore and show you what I meant by lightening up the shot just by using the same modifier and just changing the placement a little bit. So, cool. So now we're going umbrella. Is there a grid and gel holder kit for the D2? Yes, there is. The yeah, 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 it's this thing right here. Uh, you have to pair it with the zoom reflector. You have to pair it with the zoom reflector. Which uh, camera am I on? Oh, I'm not on the camera. Wide. I'll say I'll go right here. So you have to pair it with a zoom reflector, but it just clips over the front lip of the zoom reflector, right? And so you can still put your grid in there. And then on the front right here, you have like this cool little little sleeve that you can cut gels and and filters and stuff out and kind of just slide in there, rotate it however you want to. So, and you could make like custom things. So, so if you wanted like, if you wanted to cut a couple of gels to be a different couple of different colors and cast differently, you could totally do that. Why hello. Spam risk. <laughs> Thanks Apple. Um, sweet. So yeah, that's, that's what uh, is going to be your gel and filter holder for the D2. It just needs to be able to handle the heavier duty, the, the, the heat that this modeling lamp puts out. So. That's why you'd want to go that route. So cool. So we're I definitely know that we're side lighting this. Hopefully I'm not too in your way, Kate. I'm probably definitely in your way. Fine. All right, cool. Let's kill this modeling lamp. Let's get this diffusion panel put onto this umbrella. We're going to shoot that. So right on. Cool, cool, cool. Let's do this. Mm. Fusion panel, handy dandy floor trick that I like to use. Sweet. All right, cool. So let's get this thing mounted up. Pardon me, Katie, I'm sorry. No, you're fine. There we go. Lock this in a place. Lock that. Lock that. All locked down. Yep, we're good to go. So sorry, sorry for the the lack in talking for a second. You probably could use a reprieve from my my nasally cold ridden voice. Let's see. Let's go modeling lamp back on. Cool. Let's do this. I'm just gonna swap out cameras. You're fine. All right, also while you're swapping cameras, I'm gonna change my lens because my 50 is not gonna be where I need it to be. Let's go there, boom. So for this shot, I'm going with the... Was it this close to the... I feel like we were probably a little bit, we were a little bit further yeah. away. So cool. Sweet. Here we go. Let's see, we've got 23 millimeters here. I'm gonna stay at the same settings just to kind of keep the, um, once again, trying to keep some of the ambient light, try to keep some of the video light out of the shot so it's just one thing. So we're gonna stay F8, 250th of a second, ISO 160. Let's get. Hold on, patented swoop. The swoopers, okay. Just look this way for just a second towards the light. Oh, oh, I turned the trigger off. I'm a dummy. Here we go. Back this way. Perfect. Perfect. Sweet. So this is more of a wide shot, something that you could do, once again, with one big modifier. And the point of it is to try to kick as much light around the room to keep the contrast down. And we may make adjustments in the meantime to uh, achieve this, but we're gonna see what it look like, looks like right out of the jump. So here we go. Chin down just a little bit. Three, two, one. It's beautiful. This is the first shot. 
just right at the jump. So we were able to keep the contrast relatively low. I mean, it's gonna bounce around a little bit and fill some of that stuff in. It's still maybe a little bit more than I want, but I think it's still, oh. Sorry, it's, I'm just checking to make sure. It's still a really nice shot. What I would probably do just to kind of bring some of that back is I'm going to bring the light forward a little bit. I'm feathering it. So I'm actually shooting the light past Kate. So it's coming out this way. And once again, in hopes that it's gonna hit a lot more stuff around the room and bounce around. So I'm lighting her with the feathered portion. It's not directly, it's not directly flashing towards her. So it's cool stuff. So we moved a little bit further forward. I think I'm gonna need to power up just a little bit. Let's do that. So here we go. Try to stay out of the way of the camera a little bit while I'm, there we go. Three, two, one. Cool. I think one of my Rugrats is coming right, in here yeah, to visit us. About to get a little friend. In yeah. Here. <laughs> yeah. You guys might meet my daughter. You got to keep. You got to be a little bit quiet though, honey buns. Put your skirt down. Stay, stay right there. <laughs> oh, you bumped your knee. Sorry, baby. Stay right there. Oh yeah, it'll be okay. Yeah. You wanna have a seat right there and just hang out? You can watch. Yeah, you can hang out. You can sit down right there and hang out. Yeah, I wouldn't sit on that thing. I wouldn't sit on that thing. Yeah, just sit on the ground right there on the carpet. Perfect. Awesome. So cool. This shot actually, let's compare the two. The before and after where I moved the light forward. So moving the light a little, a little bit further forward. Hey, honey buns, we gotta keep you right here. Thanks, babe. Um, the cool thing about this is moving the light forward caused it to wrap a little bit more. Let me grab this computer. Caused it to wrap a little bit more and it starts to fill in those shadows that I wanted to fill in better than what we are getting right here. So a little less contrasty, which is what I like. Once again, I think bouncing it around the room is doing the right things. Honey buns, I need you to, I need you to sit right here. I apologize, everybody. So cool, really, really easy stuff. Incredibly simple with just, once again, one light. All we use this time is the diffusion panel with the, the large white umbrella and a D2, single light source, which is great. And then you can utilize the things that are around you. Like I said, I know that I have white walls in here. So by throwing the light past Kate and hitting stuff around the area, I'm able to fill in some of those shadows that I wasn't necessarily going to be able to fill in. And also backing the light up. This is kind of where some of the softer light setup is, is really great because a big modifier and choosing a really large modifier is gonna allow you to push the, the modifier further away from your subject. One, inverse square law, the light's gonna be further away so it's gonna fall off slower. So since the light is further away from Caitlin, it's not gonna be as contrasty on her. It's going to still be really large and soft. It's gonna have the ability to be thrown around a little bit more and fill in some more stuff. So it's just kind of knowing what your modifier, one, knowing what your end goal is and knowing how to use the modifier to get to that. So let me see if anyone has any questions on that. Restream, what's up? Oh, hold on a second. Question, does Profoto, oh, gotcha, that you were trying to avoid the, the grid gel holder. I totally understand. What you could also always check though and see if there's like a dope deal in the used market, especially like maybe if the thing that's stopping you from getting it is the zoom reflector itself, you could always pick up a used zoom reflector, like an old zoom one reflector, and the thing fits on that as well. So let's see. Love the backdrop, where did you purchase it? This lovely lady right here painted it. He helped. She did that. No, I didn't do anything. She did that. She did a jam up job on it. It's literally canvas from Blick and paint from Blick. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. My buddy, uh, Michael Schacht at a, uh, um, Chicago is really, really awesome headshot photographer. He taught me all this. they taught us the, all the steps on how to make that. Um, Cool. I love that the family came first. Yeah, she's a little goober. She's a, she's definitely a little goober. Sometimes you scrape your knee. What she can you do? She, she does like the camera. Yeah, she's she a. Trying to sneak her way she was in. trying to. She was like scooching her little booty into the shot. She's such a goober. Cool. So let's do something now. 
a little more poppy. So the last couple shots have been kind of dramatic, uh, darker backgrounds and stuff like that. I'm going to throw up really quick a colored backdrop. Uh, I could I could go yellow, or do you think we should do a different color? Whatever you want. Let's just let's try yellow and see what happens. The the what I want to achieve with the yellow, uh, with the soft, is I want to try to get that same look and feel as far as um, coverage on the backdrop and on Caitlyn while now being soft as opposed to being a hard light. So we were able to illuminate both the the background light or the background paper itself and Kate with the hard light just by backing it up further. So because she was closer to the background, which we're gonna be again today closer to the background, because she was closer to the background and the light was further away, the light hit her and the background at relatively the same intensity. So we were able to get illumination of both. We're gonna try to do that again with a soft light source. So I'm gonna try to back this up a little bit. I've got weight on my rolling stand. Let's see, I just wanna make sure I'm even. And then when I put this on there, it's gonna pull it down a little bit. Yeah, I'm good with that. Cool. Awesome. So yellow paper. And if anyone has any questions while I'm doing this, we can chat through it. Just, just hit us up, let me know, and we will talk about it. And if there's anything you wanna see while we're here doing these one light portraits, let us know. We'll. Uh, We'll do that. Can you do a shot where the um, umbrella is directly in front of the model? That's what we're going to do right now. Yeah. Yep, that's what this shot's going to be. That is what this shot's going to be. So because because we're trying to make the shot, you know, have a little more pop to it, um, we want to try to minimize shadows. Sorry, lift that up a little bit. There we go. All right, drop it down. Cool. We're gonna try to minimize shadows and to do that, we need to bring the light around to the front. So, be awesome. I'm gonna do my best too to make sure that I don't block you guys from seeing what's going on here. So, the, oh yeah, I need to raise the paper up a little bit more. So the rule is, it stays the same. If we get the modifier further away from the subject and the subject's closer to the background, they should go relatively exposed evenly. So we're going to do that only now we're going to do it with this big gigantic umbrella. So let's roll this bad boy out. So we're on the wide shot, right? So it's not going to, so this is probably going to go behind the wide camera party people. So yeah, yeah we're good. Oh yeah. No. Yeah. So it's probably going to go behind. You can see it a little bit. There we go. So we're probably 10 feet away from Kate big modifier about uh, uh, getting somewhere between four and five feet. You might be able to see it a little bit. Cool. So let's do this. So let's move this out of the way. Hold this for me one more time. Sure. I'm going to raise it up a little bit more too, just so it has some more height on it. Cause I'm probably going to stand relatively. All the way to that 12 ish. Yeah. All, <laughs> the, the kind of 12 foot that we have going on here. So cool, I'm gonna try to get it as close to the center as I can. We also have like boom microphones and stuff hanging around that we have to make sure we clear. So sweet, that looks good. Let's bring this this way. Sweet, perfect. So just, yeah, kind of towards the middle of it. Thank so, you. Uh, no, you know, bring, bring your hair to the front. Oh, yeah, like that, rock it out. Okay, hold on, okay. Yeah. I don't know what I just did. Yeah, oh no. Oh, yeah. no. he got wily. Got crazy. All right, cool. So here we go. So we're gonna take a TTL shot. Maybe a touch more over than I want. Let's go right here really fast. Oh, wait a second. It's, uh, it's mad at me. My memory card's full. So let's eject that since we're just tethering anyway. We'll just... That's an attractive shot. Thank you for that one. You're welcome. <laughs> and it wasn't, even, it wasn't even what I wanted. Wow, it's, it's shooting way hot. So let's just flip over to manual. It's even better. Yeah, it's not working. I think I'm I'm getting too much of her hair in the shot and it's it's pissing it off. So let's see. Here we go. Three. Oh, you know what? I don't want I don't want to be at 23 millimeters. I want to go back to 50 mils. Do you have any questions there? I'm gonna look. So cool. I'm trying to stay as far out of the way as I can. So here we go. Look right here at me. Chin down a touch. 
three, two, one. So cool. So we're starting to get, it's starting to even out on the background as far as the color goes. It's a, it's not my favorite. Oh, we gotta flip over so they can see it. It's not my favorite exposure. So let's see if we can play with it a little bit and get some more of the snap back into it. So I'm gonna set this camera down. I think what we're gonna try to do is move it a little bit further forward and see what happens here. A little bit further forward and a little more overhead in hopes that we can get the light over around the top of Kate and hitting the background. So, but so now we've gone from about eight feet away from Kate to what do you think about five feet? Five. Yeah. So five feet. So we dropped it about three feet. So let's see if we can get the coverage that we're looking for here. I'm gonna bring the power down about there. It's probably not right. I'm probably gonna have to readjust it, but it's okay. So here we go. I apologize. I know that this is in the frame now, so just bear with. So here we go. Three, two, one. Cool, it's definitely getting softer. I definitely was way off of my exposure. I'm just gonna adjust that really fast. So here we go. A little bit of a cheeky smile. Love it. So it's starting to come back up. So the exposure looks good. The background paper looks good. And once again, that's gonna be a, sorry, I'm just trying to make sure we're good. That's gonna be a byproduct of them being relatively close. By them, I mean the background and Kate being relatively close the, the mod soft modifier being about five feet away so it can fall off nicely, but also being really large and give you the coverage you want. Let's Is take, a seven foot umbrella? it's, so it's large. the large umbrella and it's 52 inches if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I'll have to look it up, but you could, if you click on the link in the, I put it in the comment section, but it's also up in the description. If you click on the link, it'll go in there and you can check out all the dimensions on it and stuff too, but I'm pretty sure it's about 52 inches. So, um, but yeah, so you could easily take some cool stuff with a single modifier. Sorry, I'm gonna set this up as I close this bad boy out, there we go. Sometimes I don't know how to use my own tripod sometimes. Sometimes, sometimes, all right. Here we go, umbrellas, running over cables. Um, how can I make a home studio? I have the paper backdrops, but I don't have the tubes. Any suggestions? Tubes as in? Like maybe like the very... Oh, oh, this right here? Oh, like the, are you talking about paper backgrounds, but you have the, um, you don't have the Veripoles? I, I'm using mine right here, so you can't really see them. But uh, you don't need those. You could just do, so depending on how big your paper is, here, depending on how big your paper is, sorry, I'm gonna, I'm gonna roll this up just so you can see what I'm talking about. You could use a couple of grip arms. So if you're using like a, a small piece of paper like this, which is about four and a half feet wide, I know I'm rolling up paper as I'm talking. Beautiful sound. So this paper is about four and a half feet wide, so I just use a, a 40 inch grip arm. A little 40 inch grip arm. And you just, the grip arm has a grip head on one end of it already attached. And then I just use an alligator clamp to clamp it up. So you can go that route, that's really, really easy. Um, you could do, if you have a larger, like a nine foot backdrop piece of paper, then you can go, I mean, people make backdrops uh, kits. You can buy like just a couple of light stands that have like a backdrop rod. Or if you just wanna make sure you have good stands and you don't always need it, uh, get two light stands and two grip heads and just put them on each side. That I do that all the time. So that's a good way of getting your paper mounted up if you need it to. Uh, when I use my four and a half foot pieces, I usually always use this like one grip, grip arm. Let's see. Let's see. Can you pull yourself back in frame? Oh, yep. Let me pull myself back in the frame. I'm getting in trouble. There we go. Cool. Any other? I'm just trying to make sure I haven't missed any. Okay, so how I can make home studio paper backdrop that I don't have the tubes to roll. Don't have a tube to roll. So, Marina, I could be totally reading what you're saying wrong. Elaborate a little bit more and we'll talk about it. Um, let's see what's, what's up. 
what would uh, what would that be like without the diffuser? Just more contrast. It shouldn't because it's um because it's a white umbrella. It really shouldn't be any more contrasty. It would have a little more of a defined edge probably, but the white is pretty smooth in and of itself. It wouldn't be terribly different. Once again, that the point behind the diffuser was to throw light a little more wide because it brings the light source closer or it brings the light source. So when you're using an umbrella. Let me lower this down so you can see what I'm talking about. So when you're using an umbrella, your light source is the umbrella. So I'm just running over cables. I'm such a pro. So when you're using an umbrella, your light source is the umbrella. So your light source is actually like back here, right? It's where the majority of the light's hitting. That's your source. Once you put a diffusion panel over your umbrella, this diffusion panel becomes your source. So whereas you have some more defined edges with the diffusion panel or without the diffusion panel with just the umbrella, because the light source is now here as opposed to being reset back a little bit furthermore, it's just throwing the light a lot more evenly, but also a lot wider. So that's the reason I want the diffusion panel. With the white umbrella, probably wouldn't look terribly different from what we were taking a photo of. If I throw a silver umbrella on there, which I can absolutely do, I've got one right there. Should we do it? Let's throw a silver umbrella. Silver umbrella is gonna be way more contrasty, way more pointed, way more pointed, but still soft. So let's show you the, let's show you the difference. <laughs> Didn't feel good. Yeah. Yeah, it didn't feel good. Cool. So we have a silver umbrella. If someone wants to know what we mean by silver and white, it's just the interior finish of the umbrella. So just like that. Once again, the silver umbrellas are a little more pointed as far as their contrast goes, and you can point them out even further by moving them closer to the flash head. So I'm going to run some more stuff over because I'm a professional. <laughs> There we go. Upsy Daisy. You need me again? Yeah, I need you again, right. Madam Headphones. Oh, great! I took the uh, I took the paper down. It's fine. It's all right. It's fine. We're fine. We're it's fine. it's fine. fine. It's all fine. We're pros here. Good. So, um, I'll just show you what the how much more pointed the light source will be now, even with it being directly in front of you. I I don't know if you actually see it on the wide shot, but you kind of can. So you'll notice that there's a very much, very much so a hot spot right there. I, I know that you can see it because I can see my hand pointing at it. Here, move my laptop. Can you? Oh yeah, minimize that. Yeah. So check this out. You can very much see how the light is very pointed right here. And I know that I have this right in front of your faces, but this should be very, very pointed. So you're still probably what, five feet away? Hold this. So because the light is pointed, you have to pay attention to where it's falling. So I actually need to rotate the, the umbrella upwards so it hits Kate on the face. There oh, it is. There it is. Yeah, you can 100% tell where that the, the silver is hitting. So the silver just has a way of pointing the light right where you want it. So let's go here. This is going to be... Hold on. Sorry, Kate. Right here. Eyeballs. Whew. It's it's trying to get past my, my big fat head. So let's go here. This thing is not happy. So let's go down six. I think is probably where we're going to need to be. So here we go. Three, two, one. Wow. See, it's really efficient too. Let's drop it down another stop and a half. It's an incredibly efficient modifier. We were... There we go. Three, two, one. There it goes. So way more contrast. It's still very, very soft. I'm trying to, I'm trying to get out of the way of the umbrella, but also be out of the way of you guys. Here we go. Chin down a little bit. There it goes. Cool. So now you can see that. So the silver just has a point to it, and you can kind of see how it's falling off around the background, right here. It's still soft. So if you see like the the feathering underneath the nose. It's still a really soft light. Yeah, let's move this. Let's do it this way. Let's go down. And then up. 
you know, you think 12 foot ceilings is awesome. And then you're like, man, I think I might need 20 foot ceilings so I can move all this stuff around. But I'll take it because we were working with like barely, barely eight foot ceilings, barely for a long time. So the, uh, the extra space is welcome. So, but you can see that it is way more pointed. You see, even though it's a really soft light, so it's, it's tough because the yellow is not apples to apples, but you can see like the arm here, still relatively even as far as the exposure goes, where if you start seeing like the pants down here, it starts to fall off quick. And it's just because you can really, really point, that thing is bright. You can really, really point an umbrella right to where you want it. So. It's kind of dope. So yes, you are gonna get some more contrast with the silver, not so much with the white. So the white with the diffusion is not gonna be too terribly different, but if you go with a silver umbrella and no diffusion panel on the front of it, vastly different. So let's see, any other questions before we sign off for the day? Yo, what did I miss? Can you start over? Yes, James, we're gonna start from the top right now. Ready, go. Um, how far is the light from the umbrella? Uh, maybe you can see this. It's probably, Two feet, Caitlin? Hold on. The end of the head to the end of the umbrella is probably two feet? Yes. Okay, it's about two feet. So, and then if you, especially with the silver, if you want to point that light even more, if you push it closer to the umbrella, you're gonna utilize even less of that, the area of the umbrella, and it'll be very, very pointed. So cool. It shouldn't be falling off because I was standing in her way. Um, it's fall, well, the second shot that I took, I was definitely not standing in the way of the light uh, here. I actually went behind it. That's why it's actually a little bit wider than the shot. Uh, the modifier is big enough. My head is large, but the modifier is actually big enough to wrap around my noggin. So I shouldn't have been affecting it too much. The only way that it would, I would really start affecting it is if I started getting really close to the subject uh then probably my shadow would overtake a lot of the light that would be hitting kate so but from where i was standing it shouldn't have had if it had an effect on it it should have been minimal let's see hey hey, hey. cool sweet so this is really really fun once again the whole point of this is to show that you can take some really, really cool shots. Let's go back up to the, the fun strip box shot too because I think it's I think it's really, really awesome. There we go. Really, really cool stuff. And we'll just do the side by side so we can, cool. But I love that shot, that's really, really cool. So the point of this was to show that you could take a modifier. One, you can use it in a weird way that most people probably don't use like I did with the strip box where it was overhead. Uh, if you're just now tuning in, you can go back and watch this in a couple of minutes when, we, when we're not live anymore and see how we had that positioned. But you can take a single modifier and you can make really, really compelling images. It doesn't require tons of lights. Is having a fill light awesome? Sure. Is having a hair light great? Yes. There are things that those lights do, like your fill is gonna drop your contrast, hair lights are going to start separating your subject from the background. That stuff's all useful, but you don't always need it. You can take a great image with a single modifier. And once again, is when it comes back to the hair light, if you think about this, the way that we are utilizing the, the way that we are utilizing the strip box for the shot gives us a hair light. So we have a little hair light right here. It's not coming from the back, but it's not that big of a deal. So we have the hair nicely illuminated, and it's a really, really great shot. So you have, you have the ability to make a lot of really, really cool images with not a lot of stuff. One light, and you can make some really, really compelling stuff. So hopefully that was fun, just exploring some things. We're gonna keep expanding on this. We're gonna go to two lights, we're gonna go to three lights, and just talk about the different ways that you can actually use those lights, especially once we start getting into like two lights, when we start talking about fill and all kinds of other little things, you're gonna start seeing how you can change the dynamics of a, a lot of the shots and how you can use them differently. Uh, you know, one could be used for a fill, you could be using just one as a kicker. So it just depends on, on, on what you're going for. So, but I think this is really fun. I wanna make sure you have no more questions before I get out of here for the day. Let's see. Who's this Chris guy? He's not worth listening to. So I would ig ignore him completely. My wife's been doing it for years. Um, maybe out of... <laughs> <laughs> <Why are you? laughs> 
Well, I've been ignoring me for years. Um, maybe add a catch light to see what that does to the image. Sure, yeah. Um, cool, so once again, thank you all so much. This is always fun. If you have any other suggestions of things that you'd like to see us cover, as we're, we're gonna move through this little series of adding lights in and talking about that kind of stuff, we're probably not gonna go so hard in the paint uh, with the next few talking about like hard and soft light, we'll probably be mixing them together because uh, there's really no huge reason to, especially once you start getting into like two and three lights, there's really no reason to like hark on, is this light soft, is this light hard? So we'll be mixing them together, but we're just gonna keep expanding. So as this is going on, if you have any ideas for some things that you'd like to see, hit us up, let me know. You can drop me a DM, uh, you can slide into Pro Photos DMs, uh, just let us know what it is that you'd like to see and we'll cover it. And this is super fun. So I don't see any other questions. Someone said, I'm a very lucky man. I appreciate it. I am a very lucky man. Love the dramatic light with the one by the, the strip box. Awesome. Thank, thank you all so much. So in the meantime, I hope you have an awesome weekend. Uh, we will be back next week doing some more fun stuff. In the meantime, peace out.